The member for Deakin. Well, thanks very much, uh, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. I was really pleased to follow the member for Bendigo um, in her contribution to this debate because um, the member for Bendigo went into some length um, about her opposition to uh, the state coalition government's policy uh, in respect of the sale of the Port of Melbourne Corporation. And there was certainly a couple of minutes there where the member for Bendigo spoke stridently against that proposed sale. I suppose the problem for the member for Bendigo, though, is that she should probably speak to the state Labor opposition leader, Daniel Andrews, who in November 2013 committed the Labor Party, if elected, to sell the Port of Melbourne Corporation. So there we have it. Uh, the member for Bendigo has repudiated uh, the state Labor Party sensible policy, uh, where they were brought kicking and screaming uh, to accepting that a sale of the Port of Melbourne Corporation uh, would be very positive. So, uh, member for Bendigo, I think you've got a little bit of explaining to do when we head back to Victoria, but I, uh, I also suspect that it's another case of saying one thing in Canberra and one thing when we all head back home to our electorates. And again, I just before I start my contribution on the asset recycling fund bill, I want to assure the member for Bendigo uh, that nobody in Victoria, uh, certainly in the outer east of Melbourne where the seat of Deakin lies, refers to the east-west link as the dud tunnel. Now, she might be concerned about the uh, inner city greens and labour fights that will happen with respect to order, order, order. The member for Hunter on a point of order. You, you can't preface your remarks by saying before I get to the bill, I want to say this and claim to be relevant to the bill. The member by his own admission is not being relevant to the bill. Well, you've, you've admitted you're not referring order, to the order, bill. Order, order, order. He, there is a little bit of latitude. The member for Deakin has the call. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker. And uh, look, I commend you for trying to save the member for Bendigo, but nothing will save her from that woeful contribution that she just made. People in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, in my seat of Deakin, uh, greatly appreciate the asset recycling fund bill, which we're here to debate today. And let's remember that this is an agreement that the uh, federal government was able to strike with every single state government, uh, including state governments of the other political persuasion. So I find it very surprising um, that uh, amendments that are being that the amendments that are being sought here um, are not being repudiated by those opposite. This bill is a key component, and the asset recycling fund is a key component in ensuring that we meet our commitments uh, with respect to giving Australia the uh, infrastructure of the 21st century, which we spoke about ad nauseum uh, during the election campaign and which we've spoken about ad nauseum since forming government. Because what sets us apart from the Labor Party is that we do not engage in endless sending out of media releases, endless announcements. I look at my colleagues uh, up north in New South Wales. I don't follow New South Wales politics that closely, but geez, geez, I can recall that many infrastructure projects being announced three and four and five times, and even in my own state, the Labor Party. Uh, there's no shame. They'll announce the same infra infrastructure project time and time again without any credible way to fund it. Well, the asset recycling fund will, be, will ensure that we have the means to deliver on our promises. The fund's de designed to provide incentives and support for our state and territory governments to sell their existing assets and invest this capital into new productive infrastructure that provides the foundations for a more productive economy. And again, the member for Bendigo, I couldn't believe it, she was almost rewriting Labor history when bemoaning privatisations. I think we need to sit her down with former Prime Ministers Hawke and Keating, and perhaps she can educate them on the mistakes they made during their very important privatisation agenda. But that just again shows you how far the Labor Party has retreated from the once great party that they were. The Asset Recycling Fund bill will start with an initial commitment of $5.9 billion, and this comes from uncommitted money in the Building Australia and Education Investment Fund. 
and will be managed by the Future Fund Board of Guardians. Um, this builds on earlier coalition government measures to create future funds, as we know, thanks to former Treasurer Costello, to benefit current and future generations by providing long-term investments in our future economic development, not just by spending money with the next election in mind. These are not short-term measures they're the, for the long-term benefits of the nation. In the 2014 budget, unlike Labor, the coalition government invested a fair income amount of $50 billion into key infrastructure projects. And I'm also very glad to read that that $50 billion investment will support more than $125 billion of construction activity once you take into account private sector and other sources of funding. So a $50 billion commitment by this government, which is unprecedented, unlocks an additional $75 billion of private investment. Over the last few years, much has been made by members opposite regarding the need for investment in infrastructure projects, and we get, um, you know, we get the uh, former minister basically interjecting every question time, desperately trying to um, save or some kind of legacy, but I can tell him that legacy has been shot out of the water, so you should just give up. But delivering modern infrastructure is something that we will deliver on this side of the House, and it's a key part of our economic action strategy to boost jobs along with investment. And again, it was something we spoke about before the last election uh, ad nauseum. Um, building the roads of the 21st century is a crucial step. And I'm very proud that in Victoria, um, prior to the election, um, through um, advocacy from Victorian federal members or federal candidates, as I was, that we were able to secure a $1.5 billion commitment in relation to the East-West Link. $1.5 billion, an unprecedented investment in crucial infrastructure for Victoria. Um, again, member for Bendigo referring to it as the Dud Tunnel. She should probably speak to the former Labor State Government and the former Labor Premier, John Brumby uh, and Steve Brax, because the East West Link being the most crucial uh, infrastructure project in Victoria was first identified by the former State Labor Government in their Eddington Review in 2008. So the member for Bendigo is in an unprecedented way basically repudiated Daniel Andrews, the current opposition leader, the last two state Labor premiers of Victoria and two great prime ministers, Bob Hawke and Paul Keating. Um, I think that just shows you exactly where the Labor Party has gone. But in addition to the $1.5 billion that was committed pre-election, um, we recognise that in order to unlock Melbourne's West and to provide a second river crossing uh, in Victoria, um, that stage two of the East West Link needed to be accelerated to. Clearly, stage one, with our $1.5 billion commitment, will kick it off and get it started this year. Um, but the additional $1.5 billion for stage two is also a recognition that to have an entirely integrated road system in Victoria, that second river crossing, in addition to um, stage one of the East West Link was going to be absolutely necessary. So there we go. We've got three billion dollars committed by this government um, to ensure that the East West Link, both stages one and two, start immediately. Another huge advantage for the Victorian economy, not just um, once the road is completed, because we know there will be massive benefits for businesses and commuters. But during the construction phase of both stages one and two of the East West Link, over 6,000 construction jobs will be created. And that is why responsible union leaders in Victoria have been absolutely desperately ple making pleas to the state Labor Party to get behind the East West Link. And I suspect that secretly um, they just wish it happens. They just want it to happen, take the hard decision away from them, and I can promise uh, the Labor Party that, yes, we will make the hard decisions. And in fact, it's not that hard. It's a very, very positive announcement for Victoria. So 6,000 new jobs during the construction 
phase of the project. What's the big problem with the east-west link? Well, the problem is for residents of Deakin, for residents of Aston, for residents of Menzies, um, people who live in the eastern suburbs, the eastern freeway ends um, effectively um, at a, an inner city um, street uh, at Clifton Hill. Um, so this project will ensure that Deakin commuters who are uh, either commuting to the airport or across town for work in the west or even into the inner north or even the CBD will no longer have to sit on the eastern freeway for hours and hours on end. And you know, a, hu a stark example of that is every Sunday afternoon when I'm making my way to the airport during a sitting week, on a Sunday afternoon I sit on Alexandra Parade at the end of the Eastern Freeway for the better part of half an hour. On a Sunday afternoon and I you know so I absolutely appreciate when my constituents complain to me at the time they spend on the Eastern Freeway. So this is a huge fillip for the Victorian economy. It's a huge fillip for jobs growth and importantly for the residents of Deakin, the East West Link is going to ensure that the eastern suburbs are no longer forgotten. Uh, and that the eastern suburbs have the infrastructure that we need, not only for our small businesses but for everyday mums and dads who, quite frankly, the time you spend on the freeway is often the difference between getting home and perhaps um, bathing your children before they go to bed or giving them a kiss or reading them a book before, you get to be before they go to bed. I mean, that is, you know, it's real life for these people. So uh, if we're able to save um, mums and dads and Look, all family members, time commuting. There are productivity benefits, but there are also deeply felt personal benefits um, to everybody. The Asset Recycling Fund, as I've mentioned, is the culmination of an historic agreement between the Commonwealth Government and the states, including Labor states. Um, so clearly, it, um, there is bipartisan support from it uh, if you put aside the grubby opposition uh, or the, you know, the endless opposition that we get from those, uh, those members of the Federal Labor Party. Uh, it makes sense. Um, recycling assets and ensuring that um, those funds from privatisations are um, contributed to new produ productivity, enhancing, productivity enhancing infrastructure. Um, it shouldn't be anything new. It shouldn't be anything particularly novel um, to members opposite, but to the extent it is, it's very positive. And if it is novel to those opposite, then um, you know, read the legislation and uh, consider it because um, it makes complete sense. And if uh, asset recycling means that rather than having endless media releases, endless photo opportunities, which the Labor Party was so good uh, with for six years. If it actually means that we start delivering projects, we have um, men and women on the ground um, with projects actually happening, uh, that it's going to have a huge fillip for the broader national economy, not just Victorian economy, uh, and also um, long-term uh, benefits to the economy through, uh, you know, more more efficient freight movement and uh, and the productivity. Um, of our citizens. Um, I also want to say that um, I want to congratulate the, uh, the state, uh, Victorian state government for uh, working hand in glove with us in respect of our investment in the East West Link um, because it has indicated to Victorian people that when you have state and federal governments who don't endlessly squabble, uh, that things can actually be delivered, and uh, you know, ultimately, my residents in Deakin want to see action. They want to see things happening. They don't want to see blame shifting from one level of government to the other. So our three billion dollars that we are committing to the East West Link, uh, and countless other infrastructure projects around the country, uh, will be a huge shot in the arm for the Victorian and national economy. Uh, and I therefore um, commend um, the relevant minister for this very, very historic asset recycling fund and congratulate him 
for being able to negotiate this with each of the states. I thank the member for.